No threat there. No, it's uh, Biden who poses the threat to democracy because he is grossly incompetent, has no idea what he's doing, and basically he doesn't have a clue. And that's a very bad position to put our country in. Our country is in very, very dangerous, in a very dangerous position right now. Very, very dangerous. We're now in a nation, and we are a nation in serious decline, a nation that has lost its way. We're led by a hopeless person, but we will win in 2024 and make America great again. We can do it. It's not too late. It's not too late. But we've got a year and a half to go. That's a long time with what's happening to our country. That's a long time still. With such a calamitous presidency, it's almost inconceivable that Biden would have even thought of running for re-election. He's destroyed our country. And yet he says in his recorded piece that he wants to finish the job. That's right. He wants to finish the job of destroying our country. But on that, he's actually very close. He is very close to finishing the job, unfortunately. One of the most important issues in this campaign will be which candidate can rescue. And this, this country needs a rescuing. We have to rescue America from the wreckage of the Biden economy. Under my leadership, we built the greatest economy in the history of the world. In fact, we actually did it twice because that horrible gift from China came over. COVID or the China virus, as many people say. Actually, in New Hampshire, you say China virus, pretty much. But now we will do it again. We will do it again. We passed the largest tax cuts and reforms in American history. We cut more job-killing regulations than any administration ever also in history. We achieved American energy independence, and we were about set to do... American energy dominance, bigger than Saudi Arabia, bigger than Russia combined, times two. And we slashed the price of gasoline down all the way down to $1.87 a gallon. Doesn't that sound good? That's why you have this horrible inflation, because of what happened to your energy. Now everything's up. Now it's happening to everything. Thank you. Thanks to our policies, the typical New Hampshire family saw their annual income rise by $6,000, the largest increase in recorded history, the largest. Nobody's ever seen that by $6,000. Everybody was happy. For decades, the corrupt globalist establishment savagely betrayed New Hampshire workers. You know that better than most. I see those I see those beautiful factory buildings. Some are now apartment houses and some are now senior citizens. But uh, the factories, that's what you had to do. The factories, there's so many gone. Your state lost one in four manufacturing jobs after the NAFTA disaster and China's entrance into the World Trade Organization. But after years of cruel sellouts by past leaders, I ended NAFTA, the worst trade deal ever ever made that was the worst trade deal ever made what they did to us for so many decades and replaced it with the incredible usmca mexico canada that's considered now the best trade deal ever made so good in fact that mexico and canada are now trying to renegotiate the deal with the biden administration i say don't do it don't talk about it don't do it somebody over there told me it's unfair i said you know what we lived with unfair for decades now they say it's unfair. No, we made a great deal, and you're all manufacturers, farmers, everybody is benefiting. USMCA, we're very proud of that. Don't let them renegotiate. I withdrew from the job-crushing Trans-Pacific Partnership. That would have totally destroyed this country. They were all set to sign. Obama, Barack Hussein Obama, they were all set to sign it. And I stood up to China like no administration has ever done before. Bringing in hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars pouring into our treasury from China when no other president had gotten even 10 cents. Not one president got, and I literally mean not 10 cents. We got hundreds of billions of dollars. I don't think they like me too much, but that's okay. Well, everybody else is paid off by China, including, by the way, our president. Okay a big problem.
You wonder why he does nothing about China, why he doesn't do what he's supposed to be doing, because he got millions of dollars from China. You see it. I made big promises to the people of New Hampshire, and as your president, I kept every single promise. When China unfairly targeted our lobstermen, I gave them hundreds of millions of dollars in relief straight from the money we were taking in from China. We took a little bit out, like a little bit, hundreds of millions of dollars, by the way, but that's a lot to a lobsterman. And we, uh, we brought it back. I made a deal with the European Union to completely eliminate tariffs on American lobster. You know that? They were charging us big tariffs so that we couldn't sell to them. The first EU tariff reduction on any product in over 20 years. Nobody ever asked the EU, or if they did, they didn't get it. Because they're very difficult people to deal with. I want to tell you that. They don't care about us. They care about them. And maybe that's the way it's supposed to be, right? I also opened up 5,000 square miles of ocean that Barack Obama closed to New England fishermen. You know about that. But you also know I opened them up totally. Nobody could even tell me why they closed. Think of miles and miles of beautiful oceanfront. And now I understand that they want to close it up again. Is that true? I can't. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Yeah, let, let Canada. Let Canada do all. You know, Canada is the one that wanted it closed because they want to do the business. How much would it be? They said approximately 28 billion. I said, I'm going to take it from China. China paid them. $28 billion. Who else is going to do that one, okay? Tell that one to President Xi. You mind giving our farmers $28 billion? Actually, better than that, uh, we signed an incredible trade deal with China. But once COVID came in, I didn't care about trade deals so much. But it's a tremendous trade deal, $50 billion. And it was uh, an amazing deal. But once, once COVID came in, I didn't even talk about it. In everything I did, I put New Hampshire first and I put America first, everything. When I left office, we handed Joe Biden the fastest economic recovery ever recorded, all with no inflation. We didn't have inflation. We had low energy prices that kept it down. When he stopped the energy, stopped the drilling, you know, I have a sign, drill we must, right? They have a sign, don't drill. We won't, just, they won't do it. They won't do it. What they're doing is crazy. And what it's done is raised everything. And now everything's so high, and now they've taken on their own inflationary trend. It's not just energy anymore. But they did that with energy. They destroyed our economy with the high prices. All electric cars. Oh, that's wonderful. Everybody. They don't, they don't have enough electric to turn on the lights. And now they're going to say, let's, let's do all electric. I love electric cars. They go for about an hour and a half. Then you're in the middle of nowhere. You're saying, how do I get this thing charged up? He took that booming economy and he promptly blew it to shreds. He took the greatest economy. It was just announced that in the first quarter of 2023, GDP growth was a very weak 1.1%. And the forecast show it's going to be getting much, much worse. So we're at 1% and getting worse. That doesn't sound too prosperous, does it? Look at these other countries that are eating our lunch. I had them. They were doing anything they could. They respected your leader. They respected your country, I want to tell you. They saw me coming. They weren't happy. They weren't happy. Every time France or one of the countries, but France in particular, they were a little difficult. I, I really like their leader, but he's a very difficult guy. And uh, whenever he got cute and wanted to tax our people or our companies, I just say, that's okay. We're going to put a 100% tariff on all wine and champagne coming into the United States. They would say, no, 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 we will not do it. We have decided we won't do it. No, but I don't think they do that. I don't think they do that in this group here. Uh, we should have tremendous power. We have tremendous economic power that we don't use. But, you know... Uh, we better be smart because soon we're not going to have economic power. We're not going to have anything. Since Joe Biden took office, the typical family has lost over $7,400 in annual income. Think of that. Inflation is out of control. Banks are collapsing. Banks are going bad. That's a bad sign. You remember 1929, it started with the banks. 
Real wages are down 24 months in a row, the longest losing streak ever, ever, ever in our country. Think of that. Real wages. That's what it's all about is real wages. The trade deficit has surged to a record $1 trillion. Household wealth has declined by $4 trillion. These are numbers that nobody's ever seen before. You know, they stand up and they say, no, the economy is good. The economy is horrible. After Biden shut down the Keystone XL pipeline that I started and passed a $20 billion tax hike on American energy, gas prices in New Hampshire are up 53%. And your state, congratulations, you did have one good thing from this administration. You set a record, if you like records, but not like this. Your state has the highest electricity costs in the entire nation. Tell your governor he ought to work on that a little bit. You know that, Steve? You have the highest cost in the entire nation. I will quickly be able to cut that number in half or more than that. I'll do that. But think of this. Think of this. Remember on the debate stage? I said to Biden, I said, why did you accept three and a half million dollars from the mayor of Moscow's wife? And Chris Wallace, he was, he didn't know how to answer the question. Chris Wallace said, you shouldn't be asking that question. That has a, I said, has a lot to do. Why did he get three and a half million dollars from Moscow? He didn't do anything for it. And Chris Wallace stopped him from giving an answer, which he didn't have, by the way, saved him. They want me to go to the Reagan Library, as an example, which is nobody knew this until I brought it up yesterday, which is run by a guy named Fred Ryan. He is the chairman and CEO of the Washington Post. Can you believe this could only happen? The Washington Post, the enemy of the people, the Washington Post, think of this, is running the Reagan Library. I think Ronald Reagan would be spinning in his grave, okay? But you say, how did that happen? But they want me to go. And sadly, your governor, Sununu, doesn't register. No, sort of a nasty, isn't he a nasty guy? You know, it's funny. His father was very, very tough. But when I won, he became one of my best supporters. He really was. He really was great. But he was really tough. This guy doesn't have the same qualities. But... You know what? You think of it. He could have run. He could have had a Senate seat. Would have helped so much. You know, he's playing games. But uh, Sununu, if you take a look at what he's done, it's crazy. He's, we're leading him, I guess, 58% to 7 in your state. You saw the poll. 58 to 7. And now if he ran for the Senate, he probably couldn't win even, you know, if you, if you put him back in that same position. But he could have really made an impact. He could have run for the Senate, would have probably easily won because of the family name, would have won. And that would have been a tremendous thing. Instead, he wants to play games with uh, running for president where he's registered at less than 1%. I don't think he's going to make it. If he made it, it would be the biggest... It would be the biggest upset in the history of politics. Any country will include every single country all over the world. And I will not give one penny to any school that has a vaccine mandate or a mask mandate. job, but we didn't mandate anything. The Democrat governors would run their states, and they did those mandates, and they were disasters, and a lot of Republicans, a lot of them, uh, they really did it right, Republican governors, when you look at what happened, and I will tell you another thing that people can't even believe, I will keep men out of women's sports, okay? You saw the other day the weightlifter and this young woman, 19-year record. Well, I don't know what it is, 200 and some odd pounds. It's a lot. It's a lot for a man or for a woman to lift, but it's a lot. And this record stood, woman's record for 
for years, 19 years or something. And uh, she got over the, the barbell. They put like a little tiny ounce on one side, ounce on the other. This thing was, if, if you beat it by an ounce, you have the world record. And she got up there and, uh, yeah, should I do it? Uh, I'm going to do it. She couldn't do it. Then a guy came along, who happens to be a woman now, according to the laws of our country. And he looked at it. They said, have you lifted before? Not really. Uh, let's take a look. He looks at it and goes, he has the record by like 90 pounds or something. Like, it is so stupid. It is so unfair. The swimmer you know about, right? The swimmer. She's a great swimmer. Great, great, great swimmer. She's going for the world record. She looked up and down. She sees young ladies that she grew up with. They're all great swimmers. They've been from the time they were born, frankly, because that's the way it is. They were good from the time they were born. Jack Nicholas was a great golfer from the first day he picked up a club. That's the way it goes, right? You know, they were great. She looked up. She sees her friend. She looks down. Then she looked to her right, and there's this huge person. Looked like Wilt Chamberlain. Wilt the Silt. He was... Seven foot one. Now look like well, with a wingspan. He was built like this. She, she was built. I'm sorry. Like this. Most perfect body. I wish I had a body like that. I would have been president 20 years ago. If I had a, this body, it comes down like this. And she looks and says, whoa, oh, whoa. This is, I wonder how she swims. And you know, the young lady was very seriously injured. You know that, right? Windburn. Windburn! Because he went by her so fast. The wind was so great. She got a bad, bad windburn, but she'll be okay. Now, do you think, does anybody really believe what's going on in this country? I will sign a law prohibiting child sexual mutilation in all 50 states. And this is what we must do to save our country from destruction. 2024 is the final battle. Uh, if we don't take it over, we're not gonna have a country anymore. We will restore the American Republic as the strongest, freest, and most powerful nation the world has ever known. We're gonna get ourselves back there, and we're gonna get it fast. They know me very well. They're not looking forward to having this happen. But they'll live with it. Actually, we got along with them pretty well. There were certain assets also. You know, other countries need a strong America, not just us. Other countries need a strong America. The USA is a mess. Our economy is crashing. Inflation is out of control. Our banks are failing. Russia has joined with China. Saudi Arabia has joined with Iran. China, Russia, Iran, North Korea have formed together as a menacing and destructive coalition. Our currency is collapsing and the dollar will soon no longer be the world standard. Can you believe this? And that will be our greatest defeat in over 200 years if we lose the dollar. There's a really good chance that we will, but it won't happen with me, not even a small chance. Just like Russia would never have invaded Ukraine, like China would not have even thought about raiding Taiwan. Wouldn't have happened. They understood. They understood. Can't do that. I used to say that if you took the five worst presidents in the history of the United States and added them up, they would not have done near the destruction to our country as Joe Biden and the Biden administration have done. But now I say if you took the 10 worst presidents, because I really believe that, if you took the 10 worst presidents and added them up, they would not have done to our nation what this man and what this administration has done. And by the way, they're going to, after this speech, they're going to be coming after me big time. We are a failing nation. We are a nation in decline. And that's what's happening. I hate to say it. I, it makes you sick to say it. And now these radical left lunatics want to interfere with our elections by using law enforcement. And we can't let that happen. With all of this being said, 
And with a very, very dark cloud hanging over our country, I have no doubt that we will together win the presidential election of 2024 and make America great again. We're going to do it. Thank you. God bless you, everybody. God bless you. God bless you. And now God bless me because I'm going to take a couple of questions, okay? Uh, where are we going to go with the questions? Do we have a mic at some point? Do we have a little mic? Oh, go ahead, please. Yes, yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Girard. Thank you for the shout out sure, early. I sure. appreciate yeah. that. Um, one of the issues we are super, super passionate about at the New Hampshire Federation of Republican Women is women's sports and keeping biological men out of women's sports and out of women's bathrooms. Right. Um, we recently released a statement calling, on, calling out Chris Pappas and Ann Custer for voting against the uh, Protection of Women's and Girls Sports Act. So how do we ensure that women can compete on an even playing field and feel safe when it comes to this issue? Vote for Trump. That's how you do it. Okay? You're going to have no problem. You got me on that one before it was even an issue. It's the craziest thing. And, you know, it's, it's amazing. It's such a, it's a good statement and or question. But uh, so many people, they hear it, they can't even believe it. They can't even believe what's going on with that subject. No, no, you vote for Trump. That's going to be totally gone. Okay? Go ahead, please. Yes, go ahead. Yes, sir, Mr. President. Uh, thank you very much, Frank Dawson, and thank you for the phone call Hi, three years ago. I remember that, yeah. Thank you very much. You, you are the man. Thank you very much. I would like to ask you a question concerning the military. Okay. Do you promise the veterans out there, guarantee them that you will make our military stronger as it was before you were pushed out of office and you will return and also make a promise to all law enforcement, all legitimate law enforcement, that you will protect and... Uh, support them all the way so i remember the call i don't know why but i have a good memory but i remember the call very much i appreciate uh the love with that statement not just a statement the answer is yes we rebuilt our military we have the finest equipment in the world you know we had jets that were 48 years old where the grandfather was flying them some of the bombers the grandfather was flying them and now the grandson is flying them no, we're redoing our military. We redid a lot. As you remember, I made Space Force, and they tried to end it as soon as they came into office, and they had a revolt in the military. We created Space Force. That's the first time in 78 years since the Air Force that something like that's been done, creating a new branch. Uh, so the answer is yes, 100%. You will be satisfied. Not only that, the veterans are very satisfied. 92%. But now, in other words, we had an approval rating. The VA of 92%. That's never happened before. That's a real job. You know, we got approved where you can fire sadists and sick people. You know, we couldn't, you couldn't fire them. No matter what they did, you couldn't fire them because of lots of reasons. I won't blame civil service. I won't blame unions. I won't blame anyone. You couldn't fire them. And we got that done. And we also got it done where you can go out and get your own doctor and we pay because some of the veterans, as you know, were online for weeks and months. Some of them became terminally ill waiting to waiting to get just a very simple procedure or or prescription. They'd have to wait four, five, six, seven weeks. And we made it. You understand this. Those two things were very important. The ability we fired, I think, 12,000 people. They were sadists. They wouldn't attack these people in prime time, I can tell you. But they were sadists, they were thieves, they were they some very bad people. We got rid of them. We, we actually had that passed in the legislature. They've been trying to do it for 48 years. And then on the other, as you know, that was a big deal. If you have to wait online for any more than 24 hours, you have the right to go out and get a doctor, get yourself taken care of, and we pay the bill. And that worked out unbelievably well. You know that's true. That's why they like us. But the answer is yes, we'll take care of it, okay? Thank you. Good to see you. Okay, please. Good afternoon, Mr. President. I'm Christine Peters, also from the New Hampshire Federation of Republican Women. Good. And two of the top three issues that women are concerned about right now are inflation and inflation and the economy. And um, how do things like the environmental social governance play into um, 
all of the economic issues that are facing women. Well, they do. And, you know, you have these fanatics, uh, the environmental fanatics. I'm an environmentalist. A lot of you are very, you know, you want clean water. We want clean air. Nobody wants dirty air and water and other things. So, uh, but you have to be reasonable. These people are crazy. They're putting windmills all over the place. They're going all over windmills. The birds are, you want to f see a bird cemetery? Go under a windmill sometime. And they're made in China, just so you know, and causing a lot of problems, very expensive. But I will say this, we will take care of this inflation by going and drilling. You know the sign in Con Ed they have Con Edison in New York, utility. They used to have a sign, dig we must, drill we must. We, we must drill. And we did some job. We had, we had it down to below $1.87 for a period of time, gasoline. And what a difference that made. When they came in and they closed everything down, they got rid of Anwar. Anwar, since Ronald Reagan, they've been trying to heat. Ronald Reagan couldn't do it. Bush couldn't do it. Nobody could do it. I got it done. The biggest site probably in the world, drilling in Alaska, they ended it the first day of the Biden administration. I mean, you think about it. They ended it the first day of the Biden administration, a, a site that would have been almost the size of Saudi Arabia, maybe bigger, and they ended it. But we'll do it again. We can do it again. We'll get it done again. Uh, when you reduce the price of energy, everything else is going to come down. And when everything else comes down, what we'll be able to do is get the interest rates down and we're going to get our country back. Because our country, the way it's going right now, is going into a depression. We're going into a depression, like a 1929 type depression. And we're not going to let that happen. But we're going to drill, we're going to get energy down, everything else. When they held it back, the energy became so oppressive, so expensive, that everything went up and you had inflation at a level that you hadn't seen in 52 years. And it's still horrible. But we're going to bring energy down, way down. We're going to get the interest rates down. We're going to get back to a great life. We're going to strengthen up our military. And we're going to be able to deal with China and Russia and everybody. And they're not going to play with us. They're not going to play with us. Thank you. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes. Go ahead. Is it on? Okay. God bless you, President Thank you Trump. very much. God bless you. My name's Christine. I'm from Atkinson, New Hampshire. And engaging with young voters is crucial. Here in New Hampshire, we have American First warriors like Caroline Levitt. How do you plan... <laughs> How do you plan to engage with Gen Z voters? Well, I think we're doing that. And I'll tell you what, you would be shocked, like Charlie Kirk and others, the job that they do with their, with their youth. It's a youth movement. It really is. That's another movement. You would be shocked to see how popular we are on college campuses. Much different than what you read, much different than what you hear. But, you know, one of the things about having this horrible thing take place where four years of... Uh, we've lived in four years of hell in this country in many ways, in many, many ways, more ways than you even know.